Now this morning, if you have your Bibles, will you open your Bibles to the book of Daniel chapter 6, verse 20 to verse 23. I'm preaching on living the faith. How many know living the faith means if I have faith, I got to live it out. And if I'm going to live it out, then I have to be always ready, ready to make my faith count. Can you say amen? amen? So Daniel chapter 6, verse 20 to verse 23, that's going to be our text. And then I'm going to read verse, First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 to verse 9. Daniel chapter 6, verse 20 to verse 23. I'll give you some time to open your Bibles there. Daniel chapter 6, verse 20 to verse 23. Oh, wow. <coughs> Hallelujah. If you're there, say amen. amen. Okay, we're ready. Daniel chapter 6, beginning in verse 20. And when he came to the den... He cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually. And I want you to remember that. The God whom you serve continually. Been able to deliver you from the lions. And Daniel said to the, to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me. Because I was found innocent before him and I also and have not hurt. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Then the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den. And no injury, whatever, injury, whatever was found on him, because he believed in his God. Father, I ask you that you bless your word this morning in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to read you First Peter chapter one, verse six to verse nine. It says, "Wherein yet greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness." Through manifold temptations. Let me repeat that again. That's First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 to verse 9. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, and that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, you love, and whom, that, um, whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Amen. Living the life as a Christian, and I'm talking about you being a genuine, genuine Christian. If you live this life, sometimes it's not going to be comfortable. And it's not going to be convenient. And it's not going to be that easy. But if you're a true born-again believer, remember this. Your faith is going to be tested. When we read this, if need be, where, where the apostle says, though now... Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, if need be. He's talking about you being in situations, in circumstances, that are, that these are trials of your faith. It can be through persecution. It can be through a problem that you have. It can be through a situation that you're dealing with and it's not that easy to deal with. Yet, these things cannot be avoided. Cannot be avoided. There's some problems, situations, circumstances that you cannot avoid. They're there. 
And unless God will work a miracle of deliverance, then it will not be for your ultimate good. Unless God does a miracle in your deliverance in these situations, then it's not going to turn out to be for your good. In other words, you can stay in the same problem, in the same trial, in the same situation for a long time. For a long time. Unless God delivers you. It is God's will to always give us the victory in trials. It is God's will to help us in our difficult times. It is God's will that whenever we are dealing with problems, it is God's will that these difficulties that we go through will be to our advantage. Be to our advantage. Sometimes these are kind of necessities where it says it need be. Sometimes these afflictions the circumstances that uh, we can go through, these trials that we can go through, that uh, these trials and the difficulties that we can go through, they sometimes are for a divine purpose. If you get cut up with secure your prosperity, and you forget God, and you become worldly minded, sometimes these difficult things that you go through is God giving you a lesson that you need to learn. That without Him, you can do nothing. And sometimes God will allow these things to happen. But see, if we apply the lessons that God teaches us, we can have victory over sin. And over our flesh. We can have victory. Over, our, over sin. And over our flesh. And that's why it says. If need be. Ye are in heaviness. Through manifold temptations. In other words. What it says. Heaviness. 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 Through different trials, through different troubles that you can go through, can cause sorrow. It can cause sorrow. And these are external things that you can go through, and they can cause sorrow. That's why it says, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Yet, though, he says, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, perishes, though he be tried with fire. Must be found into praise and honor and glory to the appearing of Jesus Christ. In other words, you can be going through these problems. You can be going through these situations. Be going through these things. They are external problems. The things that you have to deal with. But God says, because you're being tried in this fire. He says, to him is going to be praise and honor if you come through. How many understand that we are in a battle this morning? Our faith is in a battle. Yes, it's in a battle. And, if, and it's this, it's what I'm preaching, it's not for Christians that one day want to serve God and the next day they don't want to serve God. I'm talking to people that continue to persevere, 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 even in the good times and in the bad times, they keep on serving God. That's why in the Bible says, that we are in a good fight. It says fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. To whom you were also called. And have confessed a good confession. In the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. And that's exactly what you do. When you're fighting. When you're, you're holding on to your faith. Even in troubles. Even in things that, that become a struggle. The word fight. Means agonizing. It's like. You're in a struggle. You're in a battle that is not that easy. 
And if you do fail the test, I mean, no, you got to get up and, and dust yourself and keep on going. Can you say amen? You can't stay down. you got to get up and keep on fighting. And that's what the word means. Fight the good fight of faith. You're in, uh, you're, uh, you're, sometimes there's an agonizing because you are in this struggle. James puts it this way, James 1, 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall in diverse temptation. When you're experiencing problems, circumstances. And, and he says, call it all joy when ye fall in diverse temptations. Why would he say diverse temptations? Because there are some things. There are some things when you fall into these diverse temptations. The reason it says temptations, because there are different things that you're going to have to deal with. But the temptation is, you want to deal with it yourself. You want to handle business. You want to fix your own problem. You want to, you want to do it your way. Not God's way, your way. And when you do that, that's when you're going to run into problems. Because in your diverse temptations, when there is temptations, it's not for you to trust yourself. It's for you to trust God. If I'm in a storm and I take things on my hands and I do it on my own way, on my own abilities and on my own knowledge that I have, instead of trusting God, how many know my boat is sinking? I'm going to sink. Because I'm doing it all on my own. I'm going to try to fix my own problems on my own. I'm going to try to fix my own problems and all I know. Instead of reaching to God and saying, God, this temptation, these trials that I'm going through, you're the only one that can deal with these things and I'm giving them to you. I'm trusting you, Jesus. I'm trusting you. When you begin to trust Jesus, and I want you to listen. When you begin to trust Jesus, when these temptations come, I tell you what, when you begin to put your trust in Jesus, Jesus can ward off those temptations. He can ward off those temptations, the things that you're dealing with. He can ward them off. Because you're trusting in Him, not yourself. You're putting it all in the hands of God, and God can ward off those things. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's real. It's like... Some of that stuff that you might be dealing with, God will ward off that stuff that you're dealing with. The next thing you know, those things that that major problems, they're not phasing you no more. Why? Because you have given them all to God. You have given them all to God. You have cast your burdens upon him because he cares for you. Can you say amen? But then remember this. Your faith is going to be tested. Your faith is going to be challenged. Now, Daniel, the reason I'm using Daniel as an example, because Daniel, Daniel, this whole story in the Bible about Daniel, he's a young man with three other young men. Israel has fallen into idolatry. Israel has fallen into compromising. Because they did that, their protection, what God had a covering, they had a covering of God. That protection was taken away. The next thing you know, the Babylonians come and they take them captives. When they take them captives, then uh, there comes here this young man, Daniel. And these three young men also, they come with Daniel. And now things are not that easy. And now things are not going to flow the way they wanted it to flow. Now things are totally different. But it's right here where they're going to have to make a stand. In a non-godly society, the Babylonians. See, many of you that are saved right now. You came out of the world. You're not in the world no more. But at one time you were flowing downstream. You were going downstream. And, and, but now that you have become a 
Christian that you accepted Jesus, you are in direct opposition against all culture. You're going against the current. But at one time we were not called the sons of God, but now we are called the sons of God. Can you say amen? First John 3, 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, and we, are sh we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because he knew him not. Here John says, look, you are a minority, a minority, in a world where there is a majority. Yet you are called the sons of God. Aren't you glad for that? Yes, we are a minority. And there is a majority in the world. But yet we are called the sons of God. Romans chapter 7 verse 5. Paul says this. And he's talking about Christians. And he's talking about those that serve God. When we were in the flesh he says. And I want you to pay attention to this scripture. This scripture really got my attention. When we were in the flesh. The motions of sins. Which were by the law. Did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death in other words when we were living in the flesh sin was in motion your sin was in motion the life that you were living was in motion the sin sin was in motion in other words it was advancing it was moving and it was taking you in a course of destruction that would bring forth death he says, when you were in the flesh, saying to the Christian, you are not there no more, but you used to be there. He says, this is the life that you lived. You were in an, un in an unsaved state. When you were at attempted to overcome power of sin in your own efforts, you always failed. You always failed. You wanted to do things. You wanted to fix yourself. You wanted to quit drinking. You wanted to quit doing drugs. You wanted to quit doing the stuff that you knew it was wrong. You wanted to quit doing it. You couldn't do it because sin was in motion. Sin never remains static. Got to remember that. Because once you start practicing sin, sin now has motion. It has a motion. It's taking you somewhere. And Paul says this, this motion that sin has is going to end up in death. In other words, destroy what's good. See, sin never be, remains static. It pushes you deeper and deeper into darkness. Always. But Paul is saying, you're not there no more. Sin had you. Sin, the life that you live, the sin was in motion. Aren't you glad that you got saved this morning? Aren't you glad that you gave your life to Jesus? See, the Bible says, 1 John 5, verse 4, But whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Who is, who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. God has given us the victory. God has given us the victory. Now here's Daniel. I'm, 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 I'm going to talk about Daniel. Because just like Daniel. In a, an, an ungodly society. So are you living in an ungodly society. And if you're young. You're living just like Daniel. And just like those three young men. You're living in an ungodly society. They were living as captives in Babylon. And the reason was because Israel had compromised. Israel had compromised what they believed. They compromised it. And so now these people, these young men, are in Babylon. But if you read the whole story, as you read the whole story, you might think that the Babylonians were in control. You might think that because they went and they invaded Israel and brought all these people in captivity, that Nebuchadnezzar was in control. In other words, that, that they were in control. They were not in control. God was in control. God allowed that to happen, but he was still in control. Can you say amen? And God knew that these young men were going into captivity. God was still involved in that. 
He's still involved with those with those young people. He's still involved with them. But I, as you as you read stories in the Bible, it seems like evil is in control. But in the stories that you read about evil, thinking that they are in control, we find out that they are never in control. God is the one that's in control. If He allows certain things to happen. And things happen for correction, or whatever the reason. I tell you what, God is still in control. It is good to know this. Can you say amen? That God is still in control. See, Daniel was in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an ungodly place, an ungodly society. There, were, there, was, there was evil there. There were gods there. There were idols there. There were all those things there. And and and, uh, and 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 all that, these young men are gonna stand out among all those people. I got you to know something. I want to tell you something. In this lifetime that we're living, and in this place that we're living, and there yet there is an ungodly society. But if you serve God, if you live for Jesus Christ, I want you to know you are gonna stand out. You are gonna stand out. These young men were standing out. They would not bow down to idols. They would not give in to the king's orders. Because they would go totally against their beliefs. Totally. But then they, because they stood up. Because they made a stand for God. When they, when they made a stand for God. I want you to know. They made choices for God. And in those choices... God revealed himself. I'm here to tell you that we are people of choice. We do decide. We're coming into the election now. November the 9th. How I many know we all have a choice? I can't tell you who to vote for. But I can tell you what to vote for. And say amen. I can't use this pulpit to tell you what to vote for. Who to vote for. But I can tell you what to vote for. Because if you have moral standards. And you have moral principles. Then that's going to be your choice. That's going to be your vote. If you stand for what is right. And you stand against abortion. And you stand against all the perversion that's coming down. If you stand for that. Then you've already made your vote. And you have to make your vote. Can you say amen? You have to choose. You have to choose. Do you know that if you don't vote? See, no one knows what you vote for. But they know if you voted or not. So does God. And if we're Christians, how many know we're going to vote for what is right? A little bit of polit political there. got a little bit political there. Amen. <laughs> But how I many know we are people of choice? We make choices. Make choices. I read this quote. Only once, only once must we be born without our consent. How I many know it's true? You didn't say, I want to be born. You, know, you just came into the world. And then it says, only once must we die without our permission. <coughs> Did you get it? Okay. But what happens in between? We live by choices. We live by choices. These young people that went into Babylon. Now making decisions for God. Are choices. Choices that they're making. They're making choices. You are making choices this morning. You are making choices. You're making decisions that determine your future. The choices that you make, if they are good choices, it's going to bring you a good future. If they are bad choices, they'll bring you a bad future. But you have the right to make choices. Can you say amen? You are the one that decides. Here's Daniel. The Bible says, Daniel. And uh, you can read this in Daniel chapter 6, verse 1. The Bible says that Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king sought to set him over the whole realm. How did he get there? 
How did these young men get there? How did this Daniel get to a place that the king says, I'm going to leave you in charge of this whole realm? How did that happen? It happened because what the scripture we read, he served God continually. When Darius went looking for Daniel in the den of the lions, he says, did the God that you serve continually was able to deliver you? She says, the God that you serve continually, how do people get to the place that they are, they get to, and, and, and you know you can see, it. God bless this man, God bless this sister, God uh, has done a miracle, because they continued to serve God. They continue to serve God. So this morning, I don't care what season you're in, what things you're, it's happening in your lives, you, the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. He said, For an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says, Make sure that your calling is secure. See, these young people, they were chosen by God. There was an election. Of these young men. God elected them. In the scripture it says that God chose you. You didn't choose God. He elected you. So in your election. The Bible says make sure that your election. That make sure that you keep your election. Sure. In other words. God selected you. Elected you. Before the king even, even selected Daniel. To be over the realm. Over his whole realm. God had already selected Daniel, but he was making sure that his selection was sure. To this morning, you've been called by God. You were chosen by God, but you got to make sure that you keep your selection sure. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. you got to make sure that you keep, it, you keep your selection secure. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 9. For but you, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that they may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness in this marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. In other words, you are a chosen generation. I don't believe this morning. I don't believe that the choices that Daniel did made. That the choices that Daniel made and those three Hebrew boys made were just made uh, just out of nowhere. They were made because there was an old generation before them that taught them to make the right choices. I'll even read you the scripture. Psalms 145 verse 4. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. In other words, there is a generation that will teach the young generation of the mighty acts of God. Of what happened in the past. Of what took place in the past. What, why that? So that you can get strength and believe that if God did it then, he can still do it now. And you have to. That's I don't believe that Daniel and, and all those three young men, they were just... Uh, they, they weren't taught the word of God or they weren't taught the things that they that their parents shared with them that that God did in the past. No, they went into captivity knowing if God had been a deliverer back then, then he will be a deliverer now. If God created miracles, then he will create miracles now. If God back then moved upon God's people and brought prosperity and blessing. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. They were taught. Listen. We sometimes you can hear us think and, and, and speak about the old times. Us. The older generation. And we can talk about the things of God and all that God did. And all powerful God. How God moved. If we're not just speaking we're not just saying what God did back then just to say it. We're saying it so that you can understand that what he did back then, he is doing it now. And he'll do it for you again. He'll do it for you again. 
If God poured out his spirit back then, he'll pour it out again. If you want the spirit of God in your heart, he'll give it to you. He'll pour out the spirit of God upon you. Just the same way he poured it upon us when we were younger. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Just the same way that God moved upon us and we were led by the spirit of God to do the things that we did. That's the same spirit that's here this morning. And he will lead you and he will guide you. If you let him, he's going to guide you. He's going to lead you. There are things that God's prepared for you. And you just got to just believe if God has done things like like uh, the times that we lived in, in revival, he'll do it again for you. Do you say amen? amen? These young men were not in Babylon just to be there. How I many know oh, God's in control of everything? Can you say amen? No matter what, God's in control. You, I like to hear these stories. I like to read these stories. When you read stories like Joseph, when you read stories like David, when you read different stories, at the end, it was God that was in control. Can you say amen? It was God. It was God. Jesus told the disciples, you did not choose me. I chose you. I chose you. Can you say amen? He was preferred by the king. We read the story. This young man was preferred by the king, but. The Bible also says that he had an excellent spirit. Excellent. Excellent spirit. How did they ever get there? Because just like we read in the beginning, is your God that you serve continually able to deliver you? Daniel served God continually. That means he had no interruptions. No interruptions in his life. No interruptions. Rather, he was going through some hard times or, or the decisions that he had to make were not that easy. There were no interruptions in his life. He continued to just serve God, obey God, and do the will of God. And that's what brought him into an excellent spirit. The excellent spirit was because the spirit of the Lord was living inside of him. And the spirit of the Lord living inside of him was giving him an excellent spirit. That when you read excellent spirit, you're talking about a unique spirit. In other words, uh, it was not just another, another person. It was un he was unique because of the spirit of the Lord that lives inside of him. I'm telling you right now that if you keep on serving God and keep on living for God and keep on doing the will of God and you do it continually, continually, whether you're in a season or in manifold temptations and different things that you might go through, but that's okay. You continue to serve God. I want you to know you're getting closer to God, and God will get closer to you. Amen. God will get closer to you. Amen. There were choices that he was making. There were choices that he was making with God all this time. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, these young people were continually making decisions for God. And they were being elevated, not because of their skills, not because of their talents, not because of their abilities, but because of the God that lived inside of them. And the more they wanted to get closer to God, the more closer God got to them. Can you say amen? See, then God... Thank God that one day, when I was 25 years old, God led me to a place that I could accept Jesus. I thank God every single day that God led me there. I can't say that I was looking for God. No, God was looking for me. Say amen. He searched me out and he led me to a place where I could repent and my whole life could take a turnaround. I'm telling you, thank God for the spirit. Thank God for the spirit of God that can lead you to those places. Can you say amen? Lead you to those places. There's so many decisions that we have to make. But I tell you what, if we choose to, to serve God and, and seek God and ask and seek and knock. and Says God, give me, give me wisdom. Give me understanding. God's going to give it to you. But these young men were not... They'd become famous because they were singers, musicians, or, or they were skilled. 
No, they became famous because they continued to serve God regardless of what they were going through. Do you know that there's famous singers, musicians, that they started out in church? And then they ended up in the world? That was a choice. That was the choice that they made. I was looking at some of their biography. Aretha Franklin sang gospel at New Bethel Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan, where her father was a minister. Whitney Houston, she got her first introduction to music through gospel music singing in the choir, church choir. Marvin Gaye, I heard it through the grapevine. You remember. <laughs> His whole career, I mean, he was marked with a concern of, of, uh, of uh, what was going on even in, in Vietnam. But his father was a reverend in Washington, D.C., and Gay sang in the church at an early age. Albus Presley began singing in church and his church and in his church, his upbringing influenced his style and career. Early musical experiences, it says, Elvis' first public performance were in his mother's Pentecostal church in Tupelo, Tupelo, Tupelo Mississippi, Mississippi. He sang hymns with his father and was influenced by an exuberant singing and other music, musical traditions of the church. He learned, Elvis learned how to play the guitar from the pastor at his family church and two of his uncles. That's where he started. All these people that I just mentioned, they started in church. What happened? They didn't make choices like Daniel, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. Their choices was, you know what, I'm going to become famous. I'm going to go for the world and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But God was not in their choice. I'm saying all this because there's going to come a time that God's going to elevate. And he's going to elevate all those that put Jesus first. And he's going to bring them all up. Promotion, the Bible says, promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. In this ugly society that it seems like they're in charge, I want you to know God's in charge. And God will lift you up. You serve God, God's going to lift you up. You serve God continually. And he's going to elevate you to places that you never thought that you could be. There are miracles. Men, women, that their lives have completely had a turnaround. And then you will look at them now and who they were before. You could say only the hand of God could have done that. Only God did that. There's time that there's a time coming that God will do the elevation. You don't elevate yourself. You don't promote yourself. You don't manipulate yourself to a position. You don't do that. You don't do that. God's already in front of you. You just stay behind Jesus. You just stay behind God. You just do the will of God. Let him promote you. Not you yourself. Not you yourself promote yourself. Or manipulate yourself to a place. No. Has to be God. God raised these men. He raised them up. Like he raises other men. And women. And he places them in places. That, that you would have never thought. That they could be in. I heard this quote. If you see a turtle up in the fence post. You can make sure he didn't get there by himself. <laughs> Somebody put him there. No turtle is going to climb the post. They're having a hard time as it is. But you can make a make sure that somebody put him up there. It's not your skill. It's not your abilities. It's, it's, it's not what you know that's going to get you up there. 
what's going to get you up there is that you serve God continually, 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 even in seasons where things are good, things are bad, things are not working now. Sometimes, you know, decisions that are hard to make and all you through there, all through there, you keep on serving God. And you just take one step at a time. I tell you what, God's going to order the steps of your life. Can you believe that? He's going to order the steps of your life. He's going to begin to direct your life. And in that direction, he's the one that's going to elevate you. He's the one that's going to pick you up. He's the one that's going to lift you up. No man can lift up another man. No. It has to be God that lifts us up man. It has to be God that lifts us up, a, 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 a child of God, man and woman. It has to be God. The hand of God has to do it. Can you say amen? It has to be God. But when you, when you, the, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptations. When you fall into these diverse temptations, I'm giving you this word. Don't try to fix your problems on your own. Don't try to get your hands and then, and then you do it all on your own ability, your own strength. No, when you're facing a situation that you know, I can't do nothing about this, then back off. Give it to God. God knows how to handle things. Can you say amen? God knows how to handle things. He's in charge. You've been going through different manifold temptations. Give it to God. God knows how to handle things. Rest in God. Find peace in God. And says, God, this is all yours. I can't do nothing here. I need to make some righteous choices. Yes, I'll stay right with you, God. I'll make the right decisions serving you, God. I'll make stands, God, that I need to make. But you know what, God? When it all comes down to it, you're the one that's in control. I got to hand it over to you. Can you say amen? I got to just totally hand it over to you. This is who Daniel was. Daniel had an excellent spirit. And all he did was just obey God, make stands for God, and God lifted him up. Same thing with us this morning. God is the one that lifts man up and woman up. It's God that does it. You just love God, serve God, seek what's right, and do what is right. And God will do the rest. Can you say amen.